Hi, everybody. And hi, Sarah. Welcome hi. back. <laughs> welcome back from our webinars, which we previously did. And welcome into our podcast, which we are going to make available also on YouTube. But you will be able to now hear it on your favorite podcast app. Whatever you like to listen to, that's where you're going to be able to find us. And we are Woo! so excited. I'm actually yes, really so excited funny. about this. We've, We've been, been talking, talking about it for a while. For so in jinx. <laughs> yeah. And we had training on what to do and how to do it. We had the right people. We did this all before I left America and came to Israel. And finally, we're actually going to be doing it. So what we found is that it's not super convenient to do webinars on Israel time where it makes it a happy USA or around the world time. It really only worked really nicely when we did it in the evenings, East Coast time, which is like 3 a.m. my time. So sorry, wait, 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 wait. Aliza, <laughs> are you saying you don't want to stay up till 3 a.m. to a webinar with us? I'm not saying that I'm not up. But functioning on camera, uh, ready to roll at 3 a.m., not so much. Okay. But I, but I, I hear that. I'm, I'm often awake at that hour. Yeah. You're nuts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So today we're going to talk all about drum roll, please. -da -da what are we talking about, Sarah? The, the secret, secret to, to finding, finding your soulmate. soulmate. We are going to talk about the secret to finding your soulmate. First of all, is there a secret, the secret, the one and only, the holy grail? Is there a whole, like, is that it? Is there one thing? Sarah, what do you think? I think for the sake of this podcast, we should say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to name one thing that I think is the secret to finding your soulmate, but the truth is, I think that there's going to be a lot of things that a lot of people might say, oh, I, I heard this. What do you think about that idea? And if you want to further the chat and discussion, you should do that in uh, YouTube, I guess. Comment there or comment, find us on social media, wherever. Let us know because we want to talk about this with, with you. Um, but today we really wanted to talk about what we thought or what I thought or what we came up with <laughs> <laughs> as the secret to finding your soulmate. Okay, so Sarah, I don't know if you remember this from when you were dating mm -hmm. and when you and I were working through everything and we came up with these ideas, but we kind of talked about looking at everybody that you met as the potential person. Now, I'm mm -hmm. not just talking about only the person you're on a date with, right? Oh, we're on a date. Oh, so I think you have potential, right? So that's my, could be my person. No, no, no. You just look at everybody that you're meeting and whether it's a date or not a date, right? I, I'm going out into the world and I meet this guy and, and they're, I don't know, we're in the grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. And, oh, sorry, you had a grocery store yeah, I did. story, okay? <laughs> uh, for any of our old listeners, if you, if you remember, Sarah had a grocery store story, right? And if she was taking my advice, she would be looking at this guy, no wait, matter wait, his should we age. Recap it? Should we recap it really quickly? Yeah, yeah. For, for the people who don't know. So I was um, at Ralph's in Los Angeles. Uh, Which is like a shopping. grocery store. Grocery yeah. store, yeah, doing my shopping. And this guy comes over to me um, and he asked me where the yogurts are. And I am, he saw me holding yogurts. And so I'm a very friendly person. And so I flash in this big smile and I'm like, yeah, sure. And I start directing him. And then I'm like, you know what? I'll just take you come with me. And I walk him over to the yogurt. And then he asked me like, which flavor is the best flavor? Was it strawberry? Was it blueberry? Which one do I recommend? And I'm like, dude, they're yogurts. <laughs> like you probably have a favorite flavor and you probably like what? Um, and I very quickly realized that he was totally flirting with me and he asked me for my number um and i wasn't interested but the point that aliza is trying to make is that everybody you meet you should assume is potentially your person until proven or decided not okay right so sarah's in the grocery store she meets this guy the first thing she should be thinking you know besides i'm here to help him is oh there's this guy in front of me well, Aliza said, everybody is potentially my soulmate until proven not. So we're going to go with you're in front of me. You're a yes for now. And let me find out. Which you is know, basically if, what if he did. Right. Right. He was totally on board. He, he must have listened to my lectures before. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, so if she would have done that, she would have gone through this whole process. Now, Sarah, let's make up a story. Um, if he was 20 years your senior and it was obvious, right? So at first you're thinking, oh, could be my soulmate. And then you're going, oh, you know what? For me, that's a deal breaker, right? Right. For some people, they so might let me, not say so that's let a me deal back breaker. this up because he was, he was definitely 20 years older than me. Had he not been 20 years older than me, there's a good chance that I would have given him my number, right? I wasn't dating anyone at the time. Right. He's clearly interested. Um, right. And he showed that. So yeah, I'm open. Right. In this case, that kind of was my thought process unintentionally, but I saw immediately he's 20 years older than me. Right now, at that point in my life, at that point in my life, I wasn't looking for someone 20 years older than me. Um, not but some kidding. people are, let's just like cut <laughs> right, in and say, right, right, right. I've seen age gaps um, anywhere 10, 15, 20, 25 years um, apart for a couple and for the couples that got married, it worked for them. So yeah. if you're somebody who's completely open to that, it's not a problem. Then you would still continue to the yogurt aisle and be assuming like, oh, maybe he's for me. Now I'm going right. to throw a little curveball in there. What if he's wearing a wedding band? Okay. Curveball. Not everybody who wears a wedding band is married. Sometimes people who are widowed, who've lost somebody, they actually don't take it off. Not right away. They sometimes keep it on for a period of time and it's a little bit difficult. And, and if, I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who's been uh, a widow or a widower, it's almost like their finger feels naked. It's like they're not right. wearing that clothing and their finger doesn't feel right. They've had that weight on their finger. They've had that thing there for years and it feels like it belongs there. But and don't so sometimes you think if they're ready to date, they would take it off? No, really? not always. Yeah, I've seen it happen numerous times. Um, you probably could also see it portrayed in different movies or different things like that if you see it as well. Right. But if you're familiar familiar with anybody who's ever lost anybody, they don't, they not always, I'm just, sometimes they do. And sometimes they have a hard time taking it off. So you can't just look down and go, oh, I assume that they must be married. You need to check in, you need to verbalize it. You need to say something if you would like to know more about that. So, That's okay. so, so interesting. Hold on, I need right. to ask you a follow-up question on this, but don't you think that having that perspective opens you up? Like, I, I almost feel like the the risks outweigh the potential benefits. Like, there's a there's a stronger likelihood that he's married than- Stronger, yes. Not, right? So- Correct. I so if, I, okay, right. So if he's speaking to you either- Maybe he's married and he's not being so faithful. Maybe he's separated. He's almost divorced, but he's not divorced yet, but he's exploring his dating options. There's a lot of things that could come up or maybe he's widowed. So yes, if we go Which on the percentages, terrifying. yeah, I would rank it on, on a low level, but it is a possibility. So I just want to kind of expand your mind where you're like, oh, never thought of that, right? This right. could be a possibility. Right. Right. So what if, let's say, Sarah, what if he was your age, right? And what if he was cute? right? Mm -hmm. You would naturally think, Ooh, maybe, right? right? Like right. maybe this is my person. Right. Right. But I'm telling you to do this, whether or not you naturally think it with everybody, everybody so that you're meeting. Essentially what you're saying is flirting, hitting on someone is ideal. <laughs> like really? I'm, no, I, I'm saying, I don't mean it in a negative or a creepy right. or inappropriate way, but I mean that mindset of anyone is an option. You might be my person. Really I got cool. on the bus. I got on the bus and I sat down and across the aisle is somebody that's kind of cute, mm -hmm. looks kind of single, you know, looks my way. I look their way and, and, you know, Oh, maybe you're my person or maybe they interact with you and you're like, Oh, I wasn't going to talk to you. No, if somebody is interacting with you, maybe you should interact with them right. and see where it goes. Now, this rule, you have to follow me along here because everybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be open to everybody <laughs> in the whole world, right? We go until there's a no. Mm -hmm. I just came up with that. We go until there's a no. <laughs> That's a new one, everybody. And, and Elise is. Um... <laughs> right? We've got when in doubt, go out, date them till you hate them. And we go until there's a no, right? So if, I meet somebody and there's some connection and there's something going on and I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then I'm like, oh, you live in another country. I'm never moving. You're never moving. Oh, okay. That's a no. 
right? Or you meet somebody and they start connecting. And we talked about there's, there's age, there's background, right? There might be certain things in somebody's history and you're thinking, I just can't do that, right? It's not for me, whatever it is. Um, or you meet somebody and uh, you're, you start to have a conversation. You don't know where it's going, but you had in mind, you know, what's the phrase now? It's you go until there's a no. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a new one, people. So you go until there's a no. And then all of a sudden they're talking to you. Then they like look down at their phone. They spend three minutes on the phone and you're going, oh my gosh, we just met. If you're doing this to me now, imagine what's right. going to be in five years from now. No, I won't tolerate that kind of behavior or redirect them back to the conversation and say, oh, was there something that you wanted to share, right? Oh, you're on your right. phone. Is there something interesting? Um, and, and you can try to build things up, but don't assume the no before you go, right? You got to go until it's hmm. a no. And it's just going to open your mind. Like as you're looking around the world, there's going to be people that you're going to look at that you would have never considered before. And only because you're playing this game with me, you're going to be like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be open to that. Right. Oh. Uh, well, I want to say no, but I don't know why. Okay, wait, why do I want to say no? Do I have enough information? No, I probably don't have enough information. Maybe I should say hello and get to know them. Maybe I need to ask a few questions. Maybe I need to find something out, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody is in front of you, if they're in your life, if they're there today, present, then you've got to do something about it. And to me, that's the secret because when you look around the world, you are seeing so many possibilities. You're, you're not going to choose them. Right. At least 90% are going to be wrong for you, at least. But there's so many options. Now, don't tell me it's all depressing because there's so many options, but there's there's none for you. It's no, not it every opens flavor. Up of, so many more possibilities. It opens up so many more doors, right? You know what I love about this, Aliza? I feel like I've heard so many times, not I feel like I've heard, I've heard so many times <laughs> As a single person, you need to be open-minded. Um, I've totally said it to friends too, and I'm sure everyone, lis- everyone listening right now has had at least one person say to them, keep an open mind, you need to be open-minded. And it almost comes, it really comes usually when we're saying, um, I'm not interested in someone, or I'd rather not, or eh, right? So what you're saying is, be open-minded, but there's, there's boundaries and there's a framework for that, which is so much more practical than just be open-minded. Cause what does be open-minded mean? Like take me for example, be open-minded I, usually means date people that you don't like. Exactly. I, I'm just right. saying consider exactly. and look at people that you wouldn't normally consider because you almost have blinders on like, right. Take off the glasses. Right. And right. see all of the options in front of you. You're welcome to turn them down, but you better have a good reason. Right. I don't mind what the reason is. There just has to be a reason. And a good reason does not mean that you dated them four times and you find them repulsive. Like a good reason could be neither of you are willing to move. Um, Correct. It doesn't have to be as extreme right. as, as something like that. I right? really like this because this, yeah, this lets me put aside, be open-minded and allows me to just, explore the possibilities with everybody. So yeah, also part of the game is you don't have to prejudge. You don't have to prejudge. You just have to judge them in the moment when they come into your life. Right. So they come into your life. Right. And you don't Mm -hmm. have to go, Oh, I don't, I I mean, I guess it's a no, like, and quickly shove them out. Nope. We're just being open. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, Ooh, you do that chewing thing when you eat food and like I can't, I can't I'm never going to be able to sit across the table from you I can't I can't even be in the same room like eating is a large portion of our lives people here like hold on hold this. on hold on I'm just gonna pull in Elisa right now and say yeah but you know what you can just sit side by side for the rest of your life no but you still have to hear them you don't have to look at them ah. so it depends if it bothers looking or hearing right <laughs> but yes no it's totally an Elisa thing to try and compensate or come up with a creative solution for how to work around something that may not have to be a deal breaker for you. But again, we but if it is, then re- there's your no, then it is, it's done. Right. Then it's done. Right. But it, it all, here's the other big thing that this does, because first of all, it opens your options. You might not want it. You'd be like, at least I don't want to open my options, but it does. Second of all, it opens your mind. It opens your heart. 
and it sets you up for my person exists in the world. Maybe this is them. Oh, today right. I woke up. I just met a new person. Maybe this is them. Wait, there's so much potential out there. Every day I wake up, I keep meeting new people and seeing new things and interacting. And wow, maybe this is them, right? Mm -hmm. So it also keeps my heart and my head going in a direction of my soulmate exists. There's somebody coming into my life. Oh, maybe it's you. Oh, it's not. Okay, next. And right. I'm okay. You, you have to also have the framework. 90% of the people you're meeting are not going to be for you. So out of 100 people you meet, you might be disappointed to hear that 90 of them are wrong and only 10% are going to be people that we're actually going to deal with. But think about job interviews and resumes, right? Mm -hmm. How many people filter through hundreds only to come up with the top few people that actually make sense. Right. So it's just the normal part of life. And we all have preferences and you're supposed to have preferences like that whole picky thing. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to have it but you're allowed yes. to have it after you consider yes. so many people, right? Like keep your preferences, say no, but first consider it before you say no. Be more conscious about the process. Be mm -hmm. more open to everyone and everything that's coming into your life and see what you can do about it. Because to me, it's there's like possibility and potential every day. There's, there's sunshine and blue skies every day. Just open the window. Mm -hmm. You might interact and encounter that. Yeah. Um, this is not what we were getting at, but since you mentioned it, I'm going to say it because I hate, and I don't use that word lightly, when people say, don't be so picky, because you know what? This is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I'm going to be as picky as I want to be, and you should be too. <laughs> okay. And everybody, everybody has their preferences. Everybody yeah. has their preferences. But can I just add in a little, yeah, but if you meet somebody and you're being picky and fussy, but it's the person that you've dated for the longest amount of time and you've gotten mm -hmm. the furthest with, don't throw them out so quickly because there's something there that's probably a little yeah. bit more unique mm -hmm. and you've got to, we, we need more tools for that. Like we probably need to have a little bit, a bit of a coaching intervention or something to work around because you can't be so picky that there's nobody good enough for you. That's the only time that picky is a problem. Mm -hmm. Picky is a problem when I look into the world and I go, there's just nobody that's going to fit for right. me. There's nobody that's good enough. This is never going to work. I, I can't see a way through this. That to me but is But how a many singles are really like that? No, there's a lot of people that think who's going to be good enough. Who's going to, and, or mm -hmm. the, the reverse, who am I going to be good enough for? So then they throw themselves under the right. bus and they just put themselves in a very lowly place. Neither way is acceptable, right? right. right. I'm not right. so high and mighty that there's nobody to match me the way the world was created. You, your soulmate, you're thrown into the world. Where's Waldo? Go find them. <laughs> See you later. Right? No big but, deal. Right? No big deal. It's the hardest thing in the world. We know that that's why we do this because this is the hardest thing in the world. And I also believe that it is the most rewarding thing in the world. You wake up with a, a partner that you have to live with day in, day out that refines you and you refine them. I, I heard a, um, a class from a rabbi who talked about it being like two diamonds that are refining each other. Right. Ooh. And do you know about this one? Rabbi no, Fischl like Schachter it. talked about it, that how do you, create this perfect, amazing diamond, only a diamond can cut right. another diamond, right? And what happens when they cut each other? Shards, diamond shards start flying everywhere. And what do you think they do at the end of the day after they have their perfect little stone? What do they do with all that diamond dust? Do you think they sweep it up and they throw it away? No, no, all of that is so valuable, right? That can be repurposed and reused. It's diamonds, it's, di it's shards and pieces that can be Wait, reformed do they really? and Bimet, look it up. This is what really happened. No, at way. least that's that's how it went in the story. You don't throw away <laughs> diamonds, at dust, and shards. It can be reused and put into other things. But only a diamond can cut another diamond. Only we can perfect ourselves through being with our soulmate. And all of that grinding and all of that stress or any of the challenges that we have with our partner is the diamond dust. It's not for no purpose. Wow. It's not to hurt each other. It's really to elevate each other. And it's how we perfect each other. And that's why we need our partner. And that's I why- love that. I literally yeah. just got chills. I love that. It's one of my favorite stories. I one of my favorite. That. Wow. Right? 
So that's why you have to know the secret to finding your soulmate, because when you find your soulmate, what you really find is the deepest access to who you are and you have the ability to transform yourself. And at the same time, they transform themselves. And together you have this whole new entity between the two of you that exists, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. never existed before, that can exist unless you both have each other. Wow. It's really, this is why I do what I do. It's the most special thing in the world. And it's so important, which is why I need you to have your eyes open and I need you to consider everybody a possibility and then rule them out when it's time to, right? 90% right. right. you're going to say no to. I'm not, at, wait a minute make sure you're clear. I am not asking you to go around going, maybe, 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 and then give everybody tons of dates forever and ever and ever and go through this long, horrible cycle. Not asking for that. I'm asking for you to consider whomever is in front of you as a possibility of a yes until proven no. Right. I, I just need to make a comment for anyone who's a new listener or a new watcher, um, because this is available on YouTube, but Aliza is super cheesy when it comes to this stuff, <laughs> but she's so genuine about it. Like if you're listening for the first time, you're like, who is this lady who's like, oh, this is the most <laughs> Like she genuinely means it from the it's depths true. of her heart. So I just need to put that out there for anyone who doesn't know her yet. Um, so Aliza, it's true. Well, it is. <laughs> let's, let's make this like super practical. And what's coming to mind for me is actually from plus one perspective, where we really go into this idea, this concept. Um, can you tell us a little bit about notice notes and how people could use notice notes as a tool for them to make this a practical part of their day-to-day -day life? So let's take this idea which sounds so simple, but when you're out and about is not something that's front and center um, and make it really easy to implement on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, great. So let's say you go out for your morning cup of coffee and you are standing in line and there's somebody there behind you or in front of you, or maybe it's the barista or somebody there, right? That mm -hmm. is... Mm -hmm could potentially be for you, right? You, you, you go for a cup of coffee every day. You don't notice anybody. You're looking at your phone. You're too busy doing things. You sit, you pay, you sit down, you do your thing. No, no, no. Take a look around you. Notice notes mean you track what you did throughout the day and you literally notice the actual human beings that were in front of you and who's a potential, right? Which means that you shouldn't be looking at your phone when you're standing in line. You need to be looking at who's in line. You need to be having your ears open to who's talking and just like, you know, notice what's happening. I'm not telling you to eavesdrop or anything, but just notice what's happening around you and well, you can. notice who happens to be there. <laughs> and, and listen, you might have to work yourself up to actually saying something or doing something, right? There's like a step one, a step right. two, a step three. So step one is really all about just notice what's happening. Mm -hmm. Step two would be think about what you want to do about what you noticed. And step three is go and do it, go do something right. about it. Right. So maybe this time you missed the opportunity to talk to somebody because you noticed it. And then you went for coffee tomorrow and the, the same person wasn't there, but maybe there's a new person that's there and maybe you're going to say good morning and wow, what a great day it is. Great weather or oh, it's so hot or whatever you're going to say, mm -hmm. you're going to just make conversation with your wonderful smile. And you're going to see if there's something that you can brew and something that you can get going there. Awesome. And using that, using that morning coffee example, Obviously, if you're in line and you see someone, you don't say something, there's a good chance they're not going to be there tomorrow. But if the barista catches your attention, then you can note, like once you notice that and you put it down in your notice notes, notice notes could be on a notebook, it could be on a piece of paper. Like I would say, Aliza, what do you think is a decent amount of per day? How many, what should be, they be putting down per day? Because it's not realistic to say, oh, I'm going to notice everyone all of the time. But three, well, listen, five, it depen ten. depends how bit right. It depends how busy a person is, right? You could okay. go from your morning cup of coffee to the train station, to the office, out to lunch, right? You hear how many places I'm naming. So each destination could be a place where you could notice something. If you are not leaving your house much and you're working from home these days, then you might only be able to notice somebody if you are online together. Right. Uh, I mean, not in line, online. online. <laughs> 
have to clarify these days, but you might have to do some technology noticing, right? Notice somebody that's in your newsfeed or notice somebody who commented on one of your friend's comments and you're like, oh, that was a great comment. Oh wait, who is this person? Click on their name, check out who they are. Maybe send you know a message or talk to your friend to say, who's this person that you know, right? You wanna just be on the lookout because I, I really sincerely believe that your person is within reach, within wait, wait, so your I reach. I my sentence, I wanna finish my sentence. Okay. Um, so if you notice the barista, if, if they catch your attention, then be intentional the next day and the following day to go back to that same coffee shop. If you're the kind of person that typically goes to a different coffee shop every morning, like use the information that you're finding as a source of information, <laughs> like you and, and to do, no, use it and do something about, about it. it. And, and yeah. you might have to work up the guts to do something about it, but also just notice how many potential opportunities there are. Just think about it. If you go to a train station and you look around hundreds of people, you might be seeing dozens and dozens of people, right? You could just walk around the train station instead of sitting down and waiting for your train and just check everybody out and see who's there. <laughs> I don't know who's going to be there, but your person might be sitting in the train station right. and you'll never know it if you're right. on your phone. Right. Right. You, you've got to be, listen, you've got to be on the hunt. We're looking for your person. They're alive, living, breathing. They're here on this earth. You have to find them and you've got to make that effort to do it. And you've got to see the potential. And then you got to go making opportunities to meet people. And if you don't have many opportunities, Make sure to get out and about and stroll in a place where maybe it's a park and you can potentially meet people or go to a restaurant and sit outdoors and watch as people pass. Like just start but paying if attention. You're saying that if you're like me and an introvert and you don't go out and you don't have a social life, then get one, make an effort, make one. You have to that. make a really big effort. Yeah. Right. It's not. It's not easy if you don't like people. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of a problem. It's also a little bit of a problem to find your soulmate and get married if you don't like people. It's a whole other webinar, but we could talk about that later. <laughs> um, okay, Elise, I have two questions. So number one, I feel like a lot of what we're talking about is intuitive when I see someone that I'm attracted to, right? So if Correct. let's talk about the train station. I'm standing in the train station. There's hundreds of people and yeah, I'm looking at everyone like potential, but really I'm, I'm, I'm not the one who catches my eye as, Ooh, there's something about him, whether I'm, I'm using a him cause I'm a she, um, but let's say there's something about him that I find attractive, whether it's his facial features or his mannerisms or the way he's standing or the way he's talking to the lady sitting next to him, whatever it is, there's something that's attracting me to him. And so like using, using this framework, I would try to put myself outside my comfort zone and walk over to him and, and make a comment, potentially start a conversation, whatever it is. But is it fair to say that usually we're going to have that with the people that we're already attracted to in some way? Correct. That's already going to be something you're going to want to do. So I'm trying to expand your horizons and say the guy standing next to that guy who's also single and available, who's like middle of the road for you for whatever reason, it didn't catch your eye in the same way or this other one compared and, and looks better, you, he's still a potential also. So even if there's nothing necessarily pulling me to that second person, you're saying I should still see him as potential. He is potential. You might say no, but he is potential. Uh-huh. <laughs> listen I'm, not every relationship starts with this ooh ah I looked into right. his eyes and I saw or her eyes <laughs> and I saw something and I yay it's like we're not living in a romance novel and I've had plenty of singles be like no I mean I'm not really interested and then they go out mm -hmm. oh oh what's a great story heard a great story recently sent by whatsapp from a friend of mine he goes you're really gonna like this one and um this guy says you want to go out with this girl and uh he says, no, she's redhead. I'm not into redheads. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay. I mean, you're missing out. She's really fabulous. It's like, no, not my thing. So then they're at this wedding and she's all done up, you know, all fancied up. And, and there's a whole group of them. They're all taking a picture together. And the guy asks his buddy again, like, no, 
You know, like, look, she looks great. Are you like, come on. She's such a wonderful human being. You got to go out with her, give her a chance. Right. And he's like, all right. Okay. And he goes out with her and they do end up having a wonderful time and they do end up getting married. And, and the buddy later, later on, the buddy says to him, you see the hair, see, it didn't even matter. Right. Like you really, you could have gotten over it. And he goes, you know, back at the wedding, when you asked me if I wanted to go out with her, I said yes to the girl next to her. I didn't know no you were asking way. about her. And no then she showed up at way. my door. <laughs> she showed up at my, I, I mean, I showed up at her door and she opens the door and I'm panicking because that's the redhead that I don't want to go out with, but I can't be rude and say no. no. I can't, how can I say no? I'm standing at her door. So I, I pick love her up that. and I take her out and she's wonderful. Wow. And so I married her. Right. Right. Wow. So how about that? Didn't want to go out with her. It's not my thing. I don't like it. I'm not drawn to it. I'm not attracted to it. Okay. But she's amazing. She's Shazam. And she wowed you. She knocked your socks off and you got over it. We don't know what we're willing to get over until it happens. And if we would ask yep. ourselves at the beginning, <laughs> am I going to get over it? You're not. If your story is proof of that too. Like yep. there's no way. Israeli, Hasidic. We don't That's speak the same English. language. <laughs> uh, now he speaks better English and you speak better Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, question number two. So I feel like this is great advice um, for people. It's great advice for everyone, but I, it, it seems like it's great advice for people who are extroverted or comfortable going up to other people, have that confidence. What about the people who are listening who really just like they're they're not going to strike up a conversation with a total stranger how how do they use notice notes how do they use this concept in they a way to go that between. works for them their personality yeah they need to go between they need somebody who they need to notice it and then they need to get their friend or their sister or brother neighbor somebody to help to facilitate the introduction uh or a matchmaker matchmakers are great for helping people through this if it's not your thing to be able to do mm -hmm. things but it doesn't exempt you from actually having to still notice what's going on you still got to notice it because our job is to keep an open mind our job is to keep our eyes open to find the person to see the person the best person to find your person is actually you so no, if I would, if I would have, if I was going to find them, I would have found them by now. Yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't find them by now, but you will find them. And you're the one that's going to know that they're for you. You're the best person to find them. Right. But sometimes we need other people to facilitate the introduction. And so you still have to notice what's out there. You still have to notice what the possibilities are because nobody else is going through your day. And you're the only one that can see everything around you all the time. So we need your eyes on that. And we need you to be your own matchmaker as much as we need other people to support you in the process. And it's a great question. Thank you. I really appreciate you bringing it up. I just, I just heard this story yesterday. Um, it's probably a great opening for a whole different episode. So I'm just going to share it quickly and then we'll okay. wrap it up. Um, but I was listening to a, a training on ADHD. And I don't, and I think we were just talking about building skills or confidence. I don't even remember what it was, but the, the person talking was sharing this story about how, remember several years ago, there were like these crazy fires in California, Northern California. Yes. So she was living in San Francisco at the time. And they were, they were, she was somewhere near the fires and there was a whole team of firefighters at a Starbucks where she was standing in line. And she said the walls around the whole Starbucks were lined with firefighters and everyone standing in line and like wanting to say something, but no one's saying anything. Anyway, this woman, this young woman walks in and she goes around to every single firefighter, gives them a hand and says, thank you so much for your service to every single person. And they're all looking at her like, Wow. wow, you just did what we all wanted to do. And the woman, wow, I just got the, the woman who's sharing this story is saying, like, I'm thinking, who is, is she the mayor? I'm new to San Francisco. I don't even know who the mayor is here. Maybe who is this person? What does she do? She must be a politician of some sort. And she gets behind her in line um, to order her drink. And so this woman turns around and says, like, who are you? And she goes, 
Oh, you froze. Aliza? I'm here. You hear me? You with me? Yeah. Okay. Um, you froze for a second. Um, so she turns around and she says, um, who are you? And, and the young person answers and she says, I just, I was sitting in my car. I'm just trying to build my confidence. And so I told myself, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to shake every single person's hand just to build my confidence. And I was sat in my car for like 30 minutes shaking before I got out, but then I did it and I feel so good right now. And this woman wow. was floored and she's like, that's how you build confidence. That sometimes <laughs> you just have to do it. And I think I love that yeah. as, as an example of if you're the kind of person who really isn't comfortable walking up to someone, use it as practice. I, I'm, this is like, or do it for some, let me tell you also, do it for somebody else, see somebody somewhere. And it's not for you. Cause maybe you right. can't do it for yourself, right. but introduce yourself to somebody for somebody right. else and try to help them anything. I love this story because it's anything to get yourself going in addition to doing the right thing within the world to help the rest of the world keep functioning and moving in a really And this is way. so good for those instances like the train station where you know you're never going to see the person again so you can make a total fool of yourself and it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you um, have to think of that. Like it makes no difference. No difference. Like worst case scenario, that person will have a story to tell their friends and they'll laugh. You know what I mean? And maybe they'll be back at 8.30 in the right? morning tomorrow too. And you'll see each other, right? Like maybe it'll be a thing, but we don't know if it'll be a thing until you actually make a thing out of the thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So great. I love it. So that, this is our secret. So I want you to take this secret and it's not really a secret. You know why? Because I want you to share it with the world. <laughs> Go share it with your friends. Make it a non -secret. Tell them how to do it. Make it a non-secret because everybody in the world should know this. If you're single, if you're looking, you need to consider people as a possibility. Maybe that, oh, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe, right. maybe, oh, okay, no, um, maybe, right? Like we've got to go through this process, see the possibilities, keep your options open and close the door when necessary. How's that sound good? Sounds great. So it's awesome. always a go until it's a no. That's it. It's always a go until it's a no. We've got to write it down, Sarah, so we don't yeah. forget. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we will see you next time and make sure to subscribe. And if you need coaching, if you need any support, we are 100% here for you. We have a phenomenal team of 10 coaches now. You Ooh. can go on our website at marriagemindedmentor.com and you can Wait, sign up to get an intro. Soon to be 11, Sarah's going to join us. Shh. That's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can go on, you can get an intro, say hello, meet the coaches, uh, pick the one that you want and, and get started. And we've been having some pretty amazing success. We got um, engagement news the other week and it just brings a smile to my face every single time when we hear that we were able to support somebody, help them through the process to make a really great decision and to find somebody awesome and to pick them. You got to pick mm -hmm. them at a certain point. Don't wait to be picked. You've got to pick somebody and you've got to go for it. So Alrighty. thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.